Hi, welcome to part one of Painting Daisy. So this is Daisy. She is a Danish warm blood and a very sweet horse with lovely ears. And we are going to paint her. Now, I asked Daisy's uh, personal assistant to let her trot around a little bit and she held her for me and I made some pictures. The pictures are really just for backup because I don't think they're very good for painting. What is good for painting is sketching from life. And so here are some pages from my sketchbook. I decided this is the sketch I like best, where she's looking around at you. It's interesting. It gives a little bit of depth to the painting that we're going to make later on. We're going to make a more elaborate sketch, work out the depth, and also making a more detailed drawing helps me to really know this horse. There is nothing like actually drawing that will get you to know your subject. Okay, so I'm going to start out with some very light lines. Very thin, just to figure out where things go. Some, I always do some dots for the eyes and some dots for the nose. And the nose bridge is always a good refer reference line. That helps you figure out where things go. Ears. So I'm looking at my sketch right now and figure out where things go. Ears go forward and a little bit to the side. That shows that she's relaxed. I put in the neck. The head is really in front of the neck, so it's just these these weird lines that come out of the head. But once you shade it, uh, or once everything comes together, it it really is logical that it is the neck. And I do a little bit for the shoulder here. This line is sort of the back. I, I'm drawing the belly. But I'm going to cut the drawing off a bit shorter. So I'm doing these lines just to give myself an idea of what I'm thinking about drawing. Or the composition. And I keep on drawing the below the line because it just helps me figure out where things go. And then she's got that lovely little star on her face. I just like drawing lines. Okay, now we get to some more detailed points. So, the eye, that is turned away, so we see almost nothing of that eye. And this eye is the important one. And then we've got this bit of the skull that goes around it, and the jaw that's sticking out, she's got quite good jaws. A little bit of shade. Emphasizing the lower jawline and that's the lips, that's all soft tissue. And then we get the nose. It's got this sort of comma shape when the horse is relaxed. There's like a bit of cartilage in the nose that causes that comma shape. So we got the nose bridge and then the cartilage in the skin for the nose passage where it comes out. Oh, if 
our drawing a bit. It's got a lovely little star. And the star is a dot inside. So these kinds of markings are very typical for a horse and you really want to get them right. And so that's, for that I would definitely have a reference photo just to make sure that I, I get that marking perfect. Her ears are very long and narrow. A lovely little bend on the top and in Daisy the ears are very remarkable. So that's another point in this horse that you want to really get right and pay a little bit of extra attention to. And when the ears are sort of relaxed today, they are a little bit angled. And I always like that for a drawing. It's more interesting than when the ears are strictly pointed forward, but it also depends on what kind of expression you want to give the horse. Because the ears will very clearly show the mood of the horse. I'm trying to feel my way around her skull. It's quite a narrow nose bridge. And then this, this um, bony ridge. It's like one of my favorite reference points for drawing a horse's head. And going into details, like I said in the beginning, will make you familiar with your subject. With this horse, I will now, when once I finish this drawing, I, I can, I would always be able to recognize this horse because all the details of her face and her neck and her shoulders, they're now burned into my mind. So, you make a more elaborate sketch as a preparation for a painting to figure out your composition and how you want the horse to stand and turn. But I think the most important part is that it's really learning how to draw this horse. Once I've done this uh, sketch, the painting will be much easier to do. Now we're going to start the font bit and put the shade in, in the different values. So the light is coming from the right on this horse. That means her forehead is actually a bit in the shade and the light hits her cheek and then the neck behind the head is the darkest part. So I'm going to make that one but darkest shade. The eyes and the nose probably and the inside of the ears will be the darkest because there's no light in there and it's just black. I'll carefully go around the star on her head, we just got that right, we don't want to mess it up. Get the details of the ears ready. Mm. Oh, never mind, you can always turn your page if it suits you and I think it's better for the drawing if I make my lines a little bit horizontal there. And then you just turn it back as you like.
A horse has this gigantic jaws, and sometimes you can actually see the muscles in it, but not when a horse is relaxed. And there's usually a lot of fine lines going on in a horse's face. Which I'm drawing in now. And I like to go from light to dark. So this is a very soft pencil, it's a 2B and it's quite warm, so that has an influence on the lead of your pencils. So I'm starting with a very light pressure in the beginning to get a very light grey. As it all comes together I'll figure out which has to be even darker, but it's always easier to make something darker and it's more difficult to make it lighter. That means you've got to muck around with an eraser, which when you're at this point, you shouldn't touch your eraser anymore. And maybe at the end for some stray lines, although I don't, don't, don't mind stray lines, it shows how the drawing came to be. Yeah, no, there's no mistakes, there's only happy little accidents. So this has to be very dark and it has to be very precise around the nose because I don't want to mess up the the line of the face, which is the most important part. But for the rest, I'm going to be a little bit more bold with my... Oh, those are the muscles of the... of the shoulders. I'm going to be a little bit more bold with my uh, lines. This is also how I want to paint it. And I'll be, be a little bit more wild, let your hand go, and then get more into detail around the face, something like that will draw the eye towards the face, and if you really think about it, this is how our eyes work. Oh, there's my hair, I'm sorry, I have to move a little bit forward now and then to see what I'm actually doing. quite dark, not just because of the shade, she's also a mahogany bay, so she, she's she got these dark areas on her head and the top line. So now I'm really letting it rip. And always keeping in mind the planes of the shape that I'm painting, in this case the horse's back and the hips and the belly. So I'm just keeping shading, 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 shading and try and keep my lines equal. You know, I'm crossing it when I need to go darker but I'm really letting it rip here. So you get the different tonalities by working over your drawings either by uh, well both really you add more pressure and you go over the same areas again but in a different direction I'm going back to the head for a little bit more detail little bit here, little bit there. This is what happens at the end of a painting. You start looking around or drawing. 
you start looking around think, oh no, this needs to change a bit, that needs to change a bit. And sometimes you just want some time to look at it and make a decision and you sign it because you're done and then you think about it. At least that's how it always happens with me. Oh no, I'm not done. I want to do a little bit here, I want a little bit there. Hmm, a little bit there. Okay, let's do the neck a little bit. Let's do the belly a little bit. And the back. The back is dark anyway, so we can have a nice dark line there. Now we're really done. So here's the drawing. So, did you like it? Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. And don't forget to watch the other two parts that will be coming up soon of this painting, because this was just a sketch. Bye-bye.